my job interview with Mitch Kapoor, the founder and chairman and co-inventor of the product, meeting me in the hallway in stocking feet. When we first shipped 123, we had the most joyous party and started dancing in the halls and drinking champagne. Everyone was so proud of the work that we had done. And the tone and attitude that existed in the halls was actually quite electrifying. The day that we went public, everybody just packed themselves in there and they were so excited, they were all bubbly. This was 1983, which was like the summer of love of personal computers and anything was possible. Steve Young tells us about a brand new computer program company that has come out of nowhere. A year and a half ago, the company didn't exist. Now it has 215 employees housed in East Cambridge in an old factory that used to make valves. There's going to be a lot of competition. It'll be, you know, some, some punches uh, traded and uh, some back and forth, but that's... That's business, that's software, that's entertainment. If I, could, if I could dance, I would. A race to see if I could beat my superior at the time was Jim Manzi. And we'd find ourselves in the office at 3.34, 5 o'clock in the morning, maybe not leaving till later, 10 at night. A warehouse worker shouldn't be really any different from, you know, uh, Jim Manzi or Janet Axelrod in terms of how they're treated. Certainly, their pay is going to be somewhat different, but in terms of how they're treated, there shouldn't be any difference there. And that's something that Janet just constantly beat on people. And right after that, the company started to grow and grow and grow. We virtually moved into the building and launched Symphony within the same week. The whole company was asked to go over to the manufacturing area to ship one of our products so that we could get it out on time. Secretaries and vice presidents, product managers, developers working together to uh, assemble the product. It was really fun. We had people that were working on the lines, people that were working on the actual uh, shipping and the boxing. and It was really Lotus displaying its corporate value of teamwork. Finally, somebody from, I don't even know what department, a person I had never seen before, rode down to the company who was producing the slides, picked up an emergency set, jumped on a plane, flew to Toronto, got in a cab, rushed over to the hotel where we were, and calmly walked up the aisle, inserted the tray of slides, and pushed the on button, and we picked up from there exactly the way this was supposed to happen. And nobody there even realized that there had been a problem. Basically, everybody worked together to get Jazz Out the Door, English version, within a few days. But after that, we launched French and German versions with only four weeks of US ship. At the time, it was a record, and it's a record that's never been beaten. Going out, talking to 150 customers in a room, and they get excited by where we're going with our strategy, because they view us as a partner in their business planning decisions. Uh, it's a really terrific place to work. Then, to our absolute amazement, um, when all was said and done, we had raised $33,000 for Oxfam and Project Bread. Lotus paid for the entire party, and on top of that, they matched all of the funds that people gave so that our money really went a long way. Lotus culture doesn't just stop at Cambridge. It's, it's over in Windsor, it's over in France, in Paris, it's over in Germany, Munich, and now it's going to places like Sweden, Italy. We've also got a Japanese operation as well. This product was announced in 1986, and within two weeks reached the number one best-selling position in Japan. The kind of passing of the torch from Mitch to Jim Manzi. but you'd always have a parking space and you'd never have to use an ID badge to get around. Those were the two big things at Lotus. And of course, you know what happens. And that's the end of my story. Right after that, the company started to grow and grow and grow.
I can just remember it about maybe 11 at night or something like that, ordering in incredible quantities of Chinese food. It was uh, just eat food and for about an hour, don't think about work at all. And that was around the time we were rolling out the products How, Manuscript, and Freelance Plus. They also built a 40-foot tall floppy diskette that was inflatable that we also put on our building. I think it was at that point that I began to really realize that uh, we were onto something. Lotus has a significant international operation now. Uh, we're accounting for over 25% of Lotus's revenues and growing. Lotus was, I believe, the first corporate sponsor of the From All Walks of Life, which was um, a walk sponsored by the AIDS Action Committee to benefit AIDS research and care of people with AIDS. But I think that first sponsorship was a special statement at a time when no other corporation was willing to stretch out its hand. During Lotus Week. Here are all these people who enjoy one another, who put incredible energy into their work, and they were putting that equal energy into their play. At the Pointer Sisters concert. That vision of Jim in that gold lamé jacket was really something else. And the next thing you know, everybody on that first floor started boogieing. That whole place was reverberating with such joy and such intensity. And that just gave a real sense of unity to the Lotus Week celebration. But I think that there's still a lot to do here at Lotus. And the people who are here are going to be the people who make it happen in the 80s and through the 90s. And right after that, the company started to grow and grow and grow.